What's going on everybody? Chase on Tools here at Mountain Motorsports in Roswell, Georgia. In front of me, I have the gorgeous, as the sun comes out, I have Triumphs 2024 Street Triple 765 RS. And of course, if you guys are watching this video, you know about this bike. This is the Moto 2 Edition. So, this is not from Triumph. Mountain's not a Triumph dealer, but Jesse, one of the guys that works here, owns this motorcycle. This is his, and he is gracious enough to let me do a first ride on this thing for you guys. This is extremely awesome of him to let us do this. So, uh, you guys, say thank you to Jesse in the comments down below. Now, I have done a first ride on Triumph's 2024 Street Triple 765RS. That video can be found here. Now, this Moto2 is different from that motorcycle. We're going to talk about why, what it's different. It's also a little more expensive. Uh, but guys, it's a first ride. Uh, let's get into it. You guys are not here to hear me talk and just look at the motorcycle. You want me to ride it. So let's see what it looks like and let's see what it sounds like. Owners get to rev their own motorcycles so I don't blow it up. Alrighty guys, how gorgeous of a motorcycle is this? And it sounds so good too, but it may sound better in the future. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. So guys, uh, this video is not sponsored, but it is supported by my website, wbrgarage.com, where we build motorcycles into dream bikes and then we give them away to you guys that help support the show. We're currently building a 2018 Yamaha R6. It is going to be absolutely sick. I cannot wait. We're making a little R6M style motorcycle. If you guys want to win it, we are going to give it away when we get done with it. So uh, top link in the description wbrgarage.com go check it out you can get a membership on the website you can get merch you can do whatever on the website and everything you do will get you entries to win that r6 it is going to be absolutely legit now enough of that let's get on this moto 2 edition street triple so guys before we jump on the bike i do want to run through a couple modifications that jesse has done to this bike that are not stock and it doesn't come like that first we've got the windscreen up here that is color matched this is from triumph but this is not how the bike comes we've got the uh, quad lock brake lever mount this thing is new i actually installed that on a video if you want to check out the install process you can click the video i'll put a link in the description for it um we also have a fender and eliminator kit and check out the man's freaking tag moto 2 how freaking cool that he got moto 2 as the license plate for this bike i, I just love the hell out of that uh final modification that i believe he has gotten is these little integrated turn signals i think that's all the stuff he's actually done to the motorcycle so as you can tell no performance stuff so all the performance information will be the same as if you had you guys had gotten this motorcycle yourselves and obviously like i said we're going to talk through this video 
what's all different with this bike. Alrighty guys, if we've noticed the turn on sequence, you're gonna see Moto2 Edition, yay! You spent more money on a motorcycle, you get a different screen. Alrighty guys, let's get this thing cranked up. We're in neutral, right? Yeah. Alrighty guys, uh, I am 5'10", I got a 32 inch inseam and one of the modifications of the Moto2 Edition, which is what I'm gonna call the bike for this entire video, just it's the Moto2 Edition. But as you can see, I am uh, very slightly bent legs, but I can flat foot. This is the tallest seat height you can get for a Moto2 or for the Street Triple 765RS. Uh, I have no problem with flat footing and the bike's only like 414 pounds so it's not that heavy but I've got some good uh, good traction on my feet here. So anyway, it's good stuff. Oh, final modification. Uh, Jesse took off the mirrors for this little baby little flick out mirror. I think the mirrors on the bike by stock look fine but you know, I ain't gonna hate a man on his game. What else do we have? We have modes. <laughs> I hate to do it to you guys but I I'm gonna start out in rain mode just so just so we can talk through it, but there's really no need for rain mode on a Moto2 Edition Street Triple. Why would you ride around in rain mode on such a capable motorcycle? Also guys, if you're fans of Discord, uh, we've got a motorcycle Discord uh, server that you guys should check out. It's tons of motorcycle enthusiasts, just like yourself, hanging out, chatting, all about motorcycles. It's totally free, link's in the description for you if you want to check it out while we wait for traffic. Alrighty guys, our time has come. We get to go out on the Moto2. I am so excited. I love this bike. I love the RS model. Ah, this is going to be a fun day. Uh, so guys, the Moto2 edition is one of three versions of this motorcycle that you can get. There's the Street Triple 765R. There's the RS and then there's the Moto2 edition, and they are all powered by the same engine, but they change a few things each time. And I think all of them increase in price by around $3,000 or close to it. This motorcycle is the most aggressive. You can see we've got this uh, top triple clamp. You get your number and everything on there. The, this is a numbered series. There's only so many of them. So this bike is going to give you the highest seat height. It gives you clip-ons, which is going to change your rider triangle to make you the most aggressive. And there's a couple other things we'll talk through throughout the video, but you are going to be the most aggressive on this Moto2 edition thanks to that taller seat height and these handlebars. Now, since we uh, introduced the seating position, it's a first ride. Let's go ahead and talk about the seating position here. All right, so guys, first off, seat-wise, we do have a uh, slightly harder seat but I have no problem with it. It fits the motorcycle really well. I'm able to get my body weight around the bike very easily. Got no problems with the seat. My legs are in a sporty position. They're slightly behind me. They're tucked up. I do love the, uh, the seating position in my legs. And my top half, obviously we have clip-ons here. So my top half is leaned over quite a bit. My arms are draped down. I am in, I can definitely tell I'm in the most aggressive situation that I possibly can be as far as street triples go, but I feel like it, everything makes sense. Like I, my body position and how the bike responds to me feels very sporty, feels very aggressive. Everything matches and everything feels exactly like I'd want it to, and I got no problems. The only problem I have is that I am in rain mode and that is a damn disservice to this motorcycle. So we are going to transition to road mode. It's just a button, it's a off throttle, and now we are on. <laughs> that, that is what you need to be getting from this motorcycle. You need to get uh, be able to have that power on tap. It doesn't feel right without it. So guys, while we're uh, talking about modes real quick, obviously we have rain, we have road, we have sport, and then we have rider which is uh, really cool. Jesse says he has customized his rider mode. And while I appreciate him telling me I need to ride in it because he has taken off some of the safety features for, uh, for, sa for my own safety, I will not be checking out his ride mode. But apparently, at, in his own words, the bike wakes up if you put it into rider mode. I would like the bike to stay asleep. 
<laughs> um, also guys with the uh, Moto 2 edition you also get track mode all of these modes are going to change all of the rider aids of which this bike has everything it's the wheelie control the ABS the cornering ABS the traction control you get the full suite and uh, the rider modes are going to adjust that. You guys can see ABS, map, which is going to be your power delivery, and your traction control set. And you get all that info on the screen here. Uh, and we'll talk about the screen later in the video. All right, we are in road mode. If you forget what mode you are in, you get a little indicator down there in the bottom middle, at least on that screen, of what mode you're in, which I think is really cool. All right, guys, we're riding around in the city on a motorcycle that is destined and came from the track. So how does it handle? Now, one of the things that I think this Street Triple, this specific model, I mean, not the Moto 2 one, but this Street Triple in general, one of the things that this bike does so incredibly well is just be this precise instrument and it does everything so precisely i had a hard time talking about the first one because this bike does everything so precisely i didn't know the word to use but after having ridden on it for a little while riding on this one I, i've come to the word precise because that's just the best embodiment of what this bike gives you as a rider. It gives you exactly what you ask for. Now, how does that translate to road riding? Well, obviously the Moto2 Edition is not going to be the best model if you are doing a lot of road riding because you are in a more aggressive body position. You are leaned over the bike more, which is going to come in clutch if you're riding hard or riding in a technical area, maybe doing a track day. I hope you do a track day on this bike if you own one. But in the city, it's not going to be as good because of the body position you're in. Now. I haven't really had an issue and as long as you hold your weight with the tank and you're not leaning over the motorcycle and putting your weight on the handlebars, which I feel like a lot of people do that are ride super sports, as long as you do that, the bike's fine. I do feel like the suspension is a little hard, at least as, as it's set up uh, for city riding, but you've got a full Olin's front and rear setup here which obviously it's it's fully customizable that's one of the modifications you get on the moto 2 is you get olin's in the front now the regular rs model you get an olin's rear piggyback shock but you do not get the front olin's which is fully adjustable you do get that here uh we'll talk more about the suspension later down the road but right now just riding it around you you can very much tell this bike is that precision instrument that is it wants to be in that that track setting that playground that this bike will just come alive in as you can see the balance on the bike is absolutely fantastic can i get to zero without ah steering stem lock on these naked dang it i only got to one mile an hour that's why you ride though is absolutely fantastic and one of the things that this bike is going to help out a lot with is the weight uh you know if you guys ride around the city on some of the heavier bikes a lot the bikes can get a little a little exhausting you know handling these things but at 414 pounds this thing feels like absolutely nothing and when you pair that to the triple that's inside of this oh my god i might as well have wings because i'm flying you have a green arrow i do as well my god you throttle this thing up and the bike just freaking comes alive uh, i will say with the higher seat height you can't wiggle the bike around at a standing uh, standing position. But here's the trade-off. With a lower seat height, you feel more control on the motorcycle when you're not moving. But with the higher seat height, your weight as the rider is up higher. So when you lean the bike over, you have your body weight helping you out. And you can feel that with this motorcycle. Especially a little heftier of a guy like myself. I got plenty of a control over this thing. The highlighter yellow was a little much the first time I saw it, but the more I ride this bike, the more I'm like, bro, this is so awesome. You know, it's typically at a place like a, a track day or aggressive riding that having a motorcycle that's very precise comes in a lot of handy, but where it really helps you out on the street sections of riding is when you're riding a motorcycle like this that is incredibly predictable and does exactly as you ask it to it allows you as the rider to have a level of confidence to where if anything happens on this street which it's the street right a lot of stuff can happen and often does but having a motorcycle that you can rely on to do exactly as you need it to 
gives you so much confidence as a rider. I, the level of precision I have with the clutch, with the throttle, with the brakes, it allows me to not have to worry about if the bike is gonna do exactly what I want it to because I know it is going to, it is going to take my inputs and do exactly as I, what the hell? And do exactly as I, what the hell? Was that a Chick-fil-A delivery robot? Oh my God. In the city, this is the setting where like that precision, I know exactly what I'm gonna get out of my inputs. And that allows me to feel so much safer with what I do as a rider. A bike that gives you a ton of confidence, <laughs> it is so nice. What is happening? What is going on with this BMW? <laughs> Whatever, the bike's light. It's incredibly and confidence inspiring. And I love the hell out of this thing. But it is also incredibly powerful. And we have a highway 40 to 80 test to check out. We don't have a ton of wind protection, so this will be interesting. All right, guys, time for the 40 to 80 pull. Thanks for our buddies over at Law Tigers. If you need a motorcycle lawyer, there is no better one. Let's get the HUD stuff up because this is about to get real silly real quick. All right, guys, we're on a 2024 Triumph Street Triple 765 RS. I got to figure out how fast it'll get to 80. <laughs> oh, God. Law Tigers, please get my back on your mark. Get set. That's 80. That's far past 80. <laughs> Woo! Holy smokes. Oh my God, this bike is great. I love it. As we're here on the highway with the Street Triple 765 RS. My goodness, that was great. All right, so guys, powering this thing is a 765 cc the triple putting out 130 horsepower and around 60 foot pounds of torque and it is very much a fun horsepower motorcycle you get that horsepower pull through the highway you also get all the wind that you would expect um, for shits and gigs the wind starts hitting me about here but here's where this bike actually is better on the highway than the uh, rs model because I'm leaned forward on this motorcycle, I can almost lean into the wind and the wind's not as bad. When you're upright on a bike and the wind's just pushing you back, that's actually worse. It's in no way in shape or form made for the highway. We don't have cruise control. This is not a bike you would typically buy to commute on. This is more of your fun bike to, to ride aggressively. And you can definitely tell that on the highway. Now that being said, I've got plenty of power if I needed to go around all these cars. I'll shift it up into six gear and I'm chilling. I will say one of the things I noticed while I was throttling up onto the highway is that the foot pegs do vibrate quite a bit when you start revving the bike out. Something to note, it's only when I got into the higher RPMs that I really noticed that. While I'm sitting here on the highway, I have so much maneuverability. The shorter wheelbase on the Street Triple just makes it so freaking agile. I did not realize that road was like that. This amount of power, this amount of shorter wheelbase, the level of agility that you have going at speed is absolute insanity. So guys, I'm gonna enjoy the highway a little longer and while we finish it up, let's throw it to a montage. Cardo, play me a dope montage for this Street Triple Moto 2 edition. Oh man, uh, thank you Cardo for the montage. If you guys want to get a Cardo unit for yourself, they are the best motorcycle Bluetooth helmet setup. I always have them on every one of my helmets. Is this a touring bike? Absolutely not. Did I enjoy every second of that highway? Yes, I, holy shit, that's a pigeon. All right, let's get it leaned over. Oh my goodness, those Pirelli Super Courses might as well be Elmer's glue on the road. <laughs> This is the environment for the Moto2. 
Get this thing leaned over. Enjoy your life. Oh my God. I could have. The illegal tickets I could have gotten with the speed that I could have taken that turn with. Oh my goodness. Kind of got thrown off by the pigeon, but. Oh, dude, leaning this bike over is pure motorcycle bliss. Let me take a deep breath because that was phenomenal. What is happening with cars today? <laughs> oh, people are silly. All right, guys, uh, let's talk about the engine on this street triple. Like I mentioned earlier, 130 horsepower, 60-ish foot-pounds of torque coming out of the 765 triple. This bike is most certainly a high horsepower feeling motorcycle. You don't get that real uh, hit of torque. You just get that horsepower pulling you through. So if you're a fan of that type of power, you are going to absolutely love this motorcycle. As far as the suspension goes, guys, on the street, it's a little hard, but the second, the literal moment that this bike leaned over in that turn at speed, everything felt literally picture perfect. I, I could not ask for more out of a motorcycle, much less a middleweight naked. Absolutely insanity. This is such a sport bike just being hidden without fairings. They took the fairings off and you're like, oh cool, it's a naked. But the second you start riding it, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. This might not have fairings, but there is nothing not sport bike about this. The power delivery, the suspension feel, the braking. It's a Triumph. It's a high modded Triumph. We all know it's got Brembo's front and rear. And when you do find yourself needing to come to a stop, they work incredible. Oh God, maybe a little too well. These brakes feel great. You get a good pull on the throttle and you get a good feel back from the throttle, but they will also start slowing you down incredibly fast, which is equal with everything else on the bike. Everything is that sport level and my god is it great i gotta i gotta chill out i am not on a racetrack but it feels like it because i'm on this bike i've got this up and down quick shifter that works so good god i didn't get to talk about the quick shifter much but the quick shifter the best way i can describe this quick shifter and this might be my favorite quick shifter on a motorcycle. When you've got, when you're going on the motorcycle and you're going to shift, like obviously with a quick shifter, I don't have to use the clutch, right? Great, we love that. But the quick shifter is dialed so well to where I get to feel the press that I'm giving it and I get a good response of having to press hard. But once I get that hard press in, it's a click and it smooths out. I, it's really hard to describe. Some quick shifters, it's you press it and then the bike shifts for you and you feel a little dis or I feel disconnected on that. But with this kind of harder press to the quick shifter and then I get that good satisfying click into the gear and then it goes, they have it dialed so well. And I know I like the quick shifter on the RS model and it, it might be the same, honestly. It might just be that the sporty position that this bike kind of puts you in mentally I, I, I maybe I'm appreciating that quick shifter more it's it is absolutely phenomenal and it just fits the package that this motorcycle is alrighty guys uh, let's talk about the uh, cluster up here which is another modification for the Moto 2 edition as you guys saw we've got that turn on screen with the TFT dash but most importantly one of my favorite features of this motorcycle is that top triple clamp i think it looks so good it is a showstopper it's got your number of the bike on it's got moto 2 triumph and it's just holding the top of your olin suspension i love the material that this is made of probably my favorite part of this entire motorcycle now going to the grips you have extremely grippy grips here grippy grips uh, they do a great job. My hands are not moving anywhere. Now, as far as the controls, it is very Triumph. You guys know Triumph premium brand. You're going to get premium controls out of this motorcycle. And for a bike that costs 15300 something, you damn sure better have great uh, controls. 
I can definitely say you have that here. Uh, the buttons are over here, very easily controllable. The menus are very easily controllable. Uh, Triumph has a pretty minimal menu system, and I think it works really well. Uh, I got no real recommendations for them. I don't think they're as good as Ducati's, but they're really dang close. As far as the levers up here, I told you guys about the brake lever. Feels fantastic, obviously, as you guys can kind of see. I'm trying to show you guys. We got a Brembo brake lever to match that Brembo front calipers. And then the clutch lever, it's uh, adjustable. It feels great. I do wish it was made out of a, a, a slightly different material that was a little more grippy. As you guys can see, I can just run my finger along the clutch. Uh, I wish I had a little more texture to uh, pull that with. But as far as the clutch feel, it feels fantastic when I do end up using it. I love the amount of feel that I have in it. It's kind of like a medium weighted clutch. It's not super light, not super heavy. Uh, I've had no problems with that. And uh, the dash is cool. You can change the dash, the settings. Right now, we've kind of got this set up where uh, the speed top middle, you got the, the gear you're in in the bottom middle, and you have kind of information on the sides. It's a solid dash. I don't really love the uh, tack setup on either of the setups that this bike has, uh, but I do appreciate the menu system is very easy to get through. And then obviously on the right side, you've got the home button, your hazard lights, and of course your integrated kill switch and your uh, ignition. Overall guys, I just really love the cockpit view of this bike. And I mean, honestly, that's entirely <laughs> due to that top triple clamp. Uh, but I just feel like it's a good view. I think it looks fantastic. I do wish I had the mirrors. I do not like this like little tiny mirror. Uh, Stock, this bike will come with mirrors here that come up and come out. I think those are the way to go. They're absolutely fantastic. They work well. I had them on the um, the RS model that uh, Triumph let us loan for a little while. And bro, they're so good. I love that companies are starting to do stock mirrors on the sides of the handlebars. It's just one mod you don't have to get, which I think is fantastic. Alrighty guys, uh, so we're gonna pull off up here and do a little walk around of the uh, Street Triple Moto 2 Edition. It is a absolutely gorgeous motorcycle. And while I know you guys have got to watch all that camera car footage, you know I gotta walk around it. So uh, let's pull off up here and check this thing out. Alrighty guys, 2024 Triumph Street Triple 765 RS Moto 2. Is it the absolute longest name? Probably. Does it look absolutely fantastic? Also, yes. Uh, you guys let me know in the comments, is the highlighter yellow too yellow for you? Which is a joke if you know if you've known me for a very long time. Uh, but is it too much for you? I personally absolutely love it. Uh, when I first saw it in photos, I thought that I wouldn't like the gold Olins up front. I thought that would clash. But honestly, looking at it in person, I think it's dope. Obviously up front, you guys can see those dual disc Brembos. My God, they are strong. We got a little Brembo here in the back. You even get Moto2 on the exhaust, though Jesse is wanting an SC project, so we'll have to see if that happens in the future. This is another one of the modifications that I think is interesting. Uh, Pirelli Diablo Super Corsa tires on here. Those are special for this bike. The bike comes with those on them. One of the things I'm kind of curious uh, of y'all's opinion on is, do you care necessarily what tires come on a motorcycle because as a guy who buys motorcycles and like if i'm gonna buy a motorcycle i'm gonna buy it to ride it and like it's cool that those tires come on here but it would not be a purchasing decision for me because especially an aggressive tire like that you're gonna wear through it really quickly and then what you're gonna have to get another set of tires you guys let me know in the comments do you guys really care uh, about that now looking at the front of the bike i have to say I think it's cool that Jesse got this little additional windscreen, but I love the way the street triples look without that. So uh, if I were to have bought this motorcycle, I don't think I would have gotten that. Though, I do appreciate the pop of color that uh, it adds to the front. Uh, overall, guys, I've told y'all before, Triumph makes some of the coolest looking engines to me. I just, I love the whole blacked out vibe. One of the things I do love a lot is also is that carbon belly pan. Uh, I love a belly pan on a naked bike. It's just a fantastic look. Uh, so guys, I'm going to grab my phone off of this dope ass quad lock. I'm going to do some vertical videos for my buddies over on TikTok and Instagram. If you guys aren't following us over there, we are at Chase on Two Wheels on TikTok and we are at c 2 Dub Picks on Instagram. I'm going to record some video for those guys and I'll be right back. Alrighty, my friends, that's it for the vertical stuff. 
God, I love that quad lock. I know. I know you guys are tired of hearing it, but I'm sorry. I love it for this motorcycle. All right. We got to do a steering stem lock test. I don't think it's going to be good. Then we got to talk about a purchase or pass on the Street Triple Moto 2 edition. The purchase or pass will be specifically for the Street Triples. Turn on sequence so long, goodness gracious. Let's get her turned all the way around. Oh, that is, that is a tight lock. We're gonna be just wee. Not great guys, gonna be honest. Probably in a 60th percentile. Uh, not the not the most weavy motorcycle at low speeds. Let's finish this first ride up and find out if this is the street triple that I would purchase. So guys, after spending some time on this street triple, would I purchase or pass on it or the other street triple? If, if I'm talking selfishly, I do think that I would personally go with the RS model, not the Moto2 edition. Here's why. I mostly think it's because I'm too cheap and having a motorcycle that costs three grand more, basically, if, if you add everything up, the almost three grand more is basically getting you the Olin's front suspension, right? And then a track mode. So like, that's cool and all, but I think I would be too cheap to really push this motorcycle, mostly because it has a number. When bikes have a number, it, it, it makes you realize, hey, this is the only bike in the world that looks like this with that number. And that would not allow me uh, personally to ride this thing like it would need to be ridden to be appreciated. And also, I personally have a really bad back. I've had a bad back for a long time, which is why I don't ride super sports anymore because my back just can't handle it long term. So I wouldn't be able to appreciate this bike in the body position. So I think I would go with the RS model that has a slightly lower spec suspension up front and it has a handlebar which is gonna sit me the rider more upright, which is gonna make me more comfortable and let me ride that bike longer. That being said, if you are a person that loves triumphs and you want a sporty triumph maybe to do track days maybe you like canyon riding maybe you just like sporty bikes this bike is so good i love the power delivery i love the precision the precision of this motorcycle is by far its highest quality it does exactly what you want it to the way you want it to when you want it to and you don't even have to think about that as a rider. I absolutely love that. To be honest, I've loved every second of this first ride. I love the heck out of this motorcycle. I would personally save myself the 2,800 bucks. I'd get the RS model. And honestly, I wouldn't do much to it. That bike, again, is another bike that does not need much done to it. I don't even care that it doesn't have cruise control. I know you first ride fans are going to be watching this video and be like, well, Chase, you love cruise control, and this bike doesn't have it. Cruise control is fine to not have on a motorcycle if that doesn't fit its user case. And this bike has no need at having cruise control. It is a sporty, fun monster that is just intoxicating to ride i think you guys as long as you're you know that that specific rider that i'm talking about i think you guys would absolutely love this bike so guys that's going to bring me to the end of the moto 2 first ride of the street triple shout out to jesse again ah that's rocks and a car let's not ruin this motorcycle uh shout out to jesse again over at mountain motorsports for uh letting me loan this bike for the day and ride it around for you guys it has been an absolute pleasure wouldn't have been able to do it if he would not have loaned me the bike up also a uh, fun fact if you guys made it to this point in the video you're officially in the outro crew which uh means you got to the end of it which is a pretty rare amount of people uh if you guys did make sure to put oc in your comment after you like the video and uh let me know in the comments down below 2800 bucks for all of this stuff wow 2800 bucks for all of the stuff you get on this bike are you, which street triple are you going with? The Moto2, the RS, or the R? I'm super interested. Obviously, let me know why you're picking what you're picking in the comments down below. Guys, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. You guys go ride safe. I'll see you on the next one. Later. For you guys that are curious, I'll uh, leave the regular RS model first ride here at the end of the video. Bye, guys.